So let's apply what we've learned. The first question asks us to describe the reaction shown in graph A as either exothermic or endothermic. We can see that the reactants require a lot more energy to break those bonds than the products free when they are formed. So this is going to be an endothermic graph because of that difference, because we're putting more energy in to break the bonds in the reactants than we are getting out when we produce the products. It then asks us, are the reactants bonds stronger or the product bonds? Since this is where we see the greatest energy change over here, the reactants would have stronger bonds. Now notice that each question says justify or explain, so be sure you're doing that. Then we have to do the same thing for graph B. Graph B, endothermic or exothermic, here we're putting in just a little bit of energy to break the bonds and we're getting out a lot of energy when we form the products. So this is exothermic because we are releasing more energy than we are putting in. So overall, we are getting energy out, making this an exothermic um, reaction. So which bonds are stronger? Reactants or products? Well, this is the greater energy change over here when we form the reactants. So they would have the stronger bonds. It then asks us to consider this reaction and to think about the bond energies and the graphs. So we know we've got two water molecules. I like to draw these molecules out because then I don't miss any bonds. In order to know if I'm putting in more energy or getting out more energy, I need to do the bond calculations. So when I break the reactants bonds, I'm going to break one, two, three, four oxygen hydrogen bonds. So that's four times 467, which is 1868. When I form my products, I'm going to form one, two hydrogen, hydrogen single bonds and one oxygen, oxygen double bond. So that's two times 432 and one times 498. Now remember we are releasing this amount of energy. So both of these bond energy numbers do need to be negative. When we compare these two numbers, we can see that this 1868 is a bigger number than 1362. So we are putting more energy in. So graph A would describe this reaction because this is an endothermic reaction. Because we are having to put more energy in, this requires more energy to break the bonds and the reactants than we get out when we form the products. So that is how you should explain this. The value for the delta H, this is the same as asking for the enthalpy. And we're just going to add these two numbers. Since this one is already negative, we can just add them. We're really looking for the difference in those two numbers, but one of them should always be negative. Your bonds form should always be a negative number. So when we add those two together, 1868 plus a negative is minus 1362, we get 506 um, kilojoules. Here we are asked to do the same thing. We have a hydrogen-hydrogen bond and an iodine-iodine bond, and then two hydrogen-iodine bonds forming. So when we break the bonds in the reactants, we're going to need to break one hydrogen-hydrogen bond and one iodine-iodine. So 432 plus 149, and we get 581. When we form our products, we're going to form two hydrogen iodine bonds. So two times 295 and we get, oh, sorry, negative because that is being formed, negative 590. So this one, we've got more energy being released. So graph B would represent this because this is exothermic because 590 is bigger than 580. 
right? So more energy is being released. When we add these two numbers together, 581 minus 590, we get a difference of just negative nine kilojoules.